All right. Are we there? We connected. Yes, we're live. I just made a sad face because we're using a new for new thing. <laughs> and we linked our Instagram to it, but it says that we're not approved. So we'll figure that out later. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, everybody. So welcome to What the Friday, where we weekly um, on Fridays, we get together to talk about what the hell happened this past weekend. Of course, it's a really interesting time right now. So, and we're using this new app. So we've got this thing we've been struggling with. How do we get this out there? We had somebody suggest, hey, you need to stream Stacey this more. Lowry. Love you. Really Woohoo, Stacy. Woohoo, so, um, so here we are. So let's talk um, real quickly about, you know, counting on the fact that this may actually work. Um, <laughs> let's talk about this last week. So we've got this new app. You've got a number of deals that are still in play. You have not yes, had a deal tank yet out of five, one closed, you're right. four when, when, going, right? Right. When the governor put us all on lockdown, I had five under contract and one of them closed and I have four more. Two are closing next week and two are closing the week after. Sweet. Um, and they're a lot all of people are, They all look good. A lot of people are not having that success. So, you yes. know, they've got to be the, what is it you say? The, you got to be attendant? the um, flight attendant. That's right. I feel like I've hammered this analogy on everyone a lot, but <laughs> if you want to hear it, the thing that I keep thinking, Bring it on. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Fine, fine, fine. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Um, the thing that I keep thinking is when you're on an airplane and there is crazy turbulence and you're terrified and the seatbelt sign is on, you know, you're locked down and the flight attendants are locked down in their little seats and you're you're like, are we going to die or not? Where does everyone look? The flight, flight attendant, yeah. If the flight attendants are freaked out, you're you are freaked out. You're certain you're gonna die. If the flight attendants are calm, cool, upbeat, they're just like, but buckle your seatbelts. All right. Everything's gonna be fine. It makes me think about that story your mom told about the yeah. she, <laughs> she um Morgan's mother, my wife, Sharon, flies a lot, and she was on a flight, and it was going to be really rough, and the pilot came on and said, um, hey, everybody, yeah, it's going to get a little bumpy, so don't let it worry you, so mamas, hold on to your babies, we're going to be fine, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said to the Yeah, to which the is so great. Like, yeah, so I feel like that's, as a real estate agent, I am not a COVID-19 expert, uh, but I am a real estate expert. And I understand the deals and I understand what's going on. And I think for all the realtors who are freaking out, where the we are when it comes to our real estate market and when it comes to the real estate deals, we are the flight attendants. Right, and exactly. Being calm, cool, and upbeat when there's so many anxiety producing things around you. You know, I've, I've heard of deals falling through and it's not because the financial situation was dire or it wasn't for any reason other than they were just scared and thought maybe the timing was wrong or something mm -hmm. for timing the market and really looking at the data and really looking at how everything is playing out just from the numbers, from an analytical standpoint. It's like, no, actually this is a weird time and it's totally fine to be nervous and scared. Right. But we're still going to land the plane. Exactly. We're going to be fine. But, you know, that's a good um, segue. Just before I lo we logged in here and I we said hi just now, I just finished up doing some statistical analysis for the first two weeks of April. <clears throat> and it's not it's not real broad. Oh, yeah. And what I and it's what I did was I basically just looked at what are the listings, uh, how many properties listed and at what average price between April 1st and April 15th this year compared to last year. Um, and I also did rentals because we've got some, you know, I'm hoping Rich Cronin is going to join us soon and we'll yes, we talk to him. Guy. Yeah, he's awesome. I love Rich. Um, so I want to just share some quick numbers here. If I, if I was a little more technically savvy, I would have had this oh. on a graphic that I could have shared with you. Um, oh, but this okay. year, right now, we'll run through these really quick. Right now, um, in that time frame, April 1st, April 15th, we had 42 multifamily units, two to four units, that were listed at an average price of 694,000 bucks. That's down from 123 multifamily units 
that we had last year at the same time at 600, 765,000. So that means those two to four family units, the average price dropped about 9% year over year. And the total number of units that came online are 66% less. So you can see that, um, you know, business is down two thirds, you know, the, right. which is part of the reason why a lot of realtors are But nervous. it sounds like it's proportional. Um, condos, I think so, yeah. Generally, the price the price reduction, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, right now, at the same time, this year we had a, this year we have 105 condos that went live during those first two weeks of April. And um, last year we had 340. So the number of units is down 69%. Oh, okay. And then the but single family units. Already? Did I miss that? Pardon me? Did you say closings or are you just doing listings? Just doing listings. Number okay. of units listed and the average price they were listed at. Got it, got it. So um, last year we had 340 condos that listed at an average price of 692000 This year we had 105 at an average wow. price of 583000 So the average asking price is down 5.6%. Mm -hmm. And the number of units is down 69%. Um, single what? families... One family units, um, 330, or I'm sorry, there are 28 single family homes that were listed between April 1st and April 15th this year versus 100 on the nose last year. Price is down 8.8% right now. So we're starting uh, about a week ago or two weeks ago, we really weren't seeing the price declines as much, but now, we're, no. now that as we're growing into that, we're factoring that in more. Yeah, I'm interested to see how that goes because we because the number of listings is so low that it's really hard to say what the pricing actually is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, sorry. I see. Um, I think Rich is here. He is. Yeah, I'm about hey. to. He's there. there. Oh, did you just? I, I did. I just added him. I, I know. I'm figuring out how it works. Sorry about that. The landlord thing. <laughs> Perfect. So, well, we want to talk about landlords. So. Well, that was awesome the way that worked. <laughs> I know. It's pretty great. Hey, Rich. Hey, how are you? Were you able to hear much of that? Uh, I was able to hear a part of it. Okay. Um, and and guess what? I got the same numbers. Oh, good. Yeah, but I, <laughs> that's I, really I, good because <laughs> I never, Rich's I mean, numbers are like, insanely like, accurate. Like, Mine are a little sloppy. Yeah, yeah um, if you have a number, we're like, great. You are God. <laughs> <laughs> we believe. Yeah, I, was, uh, I was looking at Hoboken and Jersey City uh, very specifically. Um, because that area is an area where I pretty much concentrate on. You did the whole. Uh, I did MLS. Hudson County, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, in Hoboken, I do see uh, 93 in the past 50, 45 days, 93 properties went active, and uh, 100 of them are pending, and the prices have gone down by like 5.6%. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm expecting it to go down a little more than 10% um, in the next two months. So that's that's where we're looking at it. Going. Why do you think that? Well, um, there's a combination of things going on right now. Um, if, you, if you actually take a look at the listings, uh, you actually go into the listings. One thing that I've noticed is how many empty properties I'm looking at. Oh, Whereas yeah. before they're either staged or the tenant was in it. Yeah, um, and they're using the tenants' properties. But now, as I'm doing my next mailer out to my client base, I the profound thing that's in front of me are, are empty properties that which I never really saw before. So I think a lot of the things that are happening is that the smart tenant who realizes that they're in a little bit of trouble and just to stay where they're at right now mm -hmm. uh, might have some problems. Will have some problems in the next. You know, months. So it's either collapsing back to something that they can afford a little bit easier or going back home. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so these are people that are making decisions pretty quickly as to what they're going to do. Uh, right. And then those properties that you'll take a look, take a look at them a little bit closer. You'll you'll be shocked at how many of them you actually see that are empty, which, which we've never really, you know, produced on the MLS before. You know, and those, I don't know what your stats on rentals are. I did the number of rental listings this year over last year, Hudson County MLS wide, mainly because I was just looking for the the trend. Mm -hmm. um, 
I didn't want to get into the weeds too much. This year, um, we have 330 rentals that were listed for rent. Of course, things are changing a little bit that way anyway, but 330 rentals came on April 1st to April 15th of this year versus 590 last year. So, you, is somebody getting a phone call? Is that just on my end? Not here. I hear it, but I don't know I what it, it is. Too, but not here. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing the same things. Um, and again, if I'm concentrating on Hoboken in Jersey City, downtown Jersey City, uh, I'm shocked to see about between five and seven active rentals right now. Right. In those areas. It's, it's, you know, the. Uh, um, I'm showing that the rent that when I didn't, you know, I just took the total units, then average the rent of all of those units. Mm -hmm. The average rent is up 7%. The units yeah. are down. The number of units is down 44%. The average monthly rent is up. Huh. Um, I don't know how that's going to You may be have affected. to take a look at those units that are driving that. Yeah. Um, you know, the actual units may be uh, a new building. A larger unit that's driving those prices up because once you have a smaller sphere of uh, data that you're working with, mm -hmm. the price fluctuation can actually go up or down more significantly with a smaller data set. Right, if that makes sense, yeah, yeah. But it, but you know we've we've had some conversations about landlords. Um, yeah. There are we've both run into a number of agents that appear to be really hungry and are really trying to push landlords to sell right now but that doesn't i don't know that that's such a you know we were talking about that that yeah doesn't seem like such a great idea you want to share what you were sharing with me yeah. earlier about your take um, on that i i have a, a rather large database of landlords that i keep in touch with and uh my first two mailers that i sent out to them that covered uh the covid 19 um, virus and the pandemic and, and how it's affecting the landlord database. Uh, I had tremendous feedback coming back. And one of the mailers that I, I sent out, email mailers that they, they sent out, had a lot of feedback, including their other agents that they used previously, um, where they started getting in into a tit for tat of what should they do. Uh, the current agent that they're dealing with is trying to push them to sell that property because you get in the market now, market's still good, uh, properties are still selling, and that's all true. Um, as I said, if you know, I take a look at Hoboken in the past 15 or 45 days, 93 properties went active, and you can actually take a look at 100 properties are in pending status. So that's a lot. You, you can actually say, yes, I can sell your property. But to your point, and to my point of looking at the data, that price range is going down uh, of uh, what properties actually sell for. Um, and our discussion earlier today uh, with uh, you and I, Bill, was my frustration in doing that because my responsibility is to be invest the client's investment and is now the right time to sell. Um, for a couple reasons, uh, the the available buyers just really aren't there. You know, if it's true that there's a hundred properties that are pending status right now in Hoboken, but what was the universe of people that were trying to buy, and what's the leverage that that buyer is trying to purchase at? They know that that seller wants to sell quickly, um, so those prices generally go go low. Um, and when I talk to a landlord who must sell now, they don't have an option to sell, they must sell now. We don't take a look at recent properties that just sold. We took a, take a look at properties today that are in pending status and what are they selling for today? What was the agreed price? Because yesterday's sell price does not equal to an agreed upon contract today or agreed on price today. Mm -hmm. So what I will do is when we're taking a look at a property and say, okay, if we're listing your property right now, I'm going to be reaching out to these 20 agents to try to find out what they accepted their last contract for. Uh, if they'll tell you. If they tell you, because they have a fiduciary responsibility not to. But mm -hmm. for example, you and I, I'll say, hey, Bill, I'm trying to put this property on for 750. 
um, you have a similar property, is that the right target? Because you have something impending right now, is that the right target? Mm -hmm. um, and between agents, you'll have some people will say that's a good target. Um, other people just, you know, they, they true. Do and I, th I, yeah. I think when you get to that, um, that top 20%, 10 to 20% of agents, there's a, a group of those in that percentage that are, they get it. They, you know, you work yeah. together, you've done deals together. They know you're not being malicious. You're just trying to yeah. do a good job for your client. And it, exactly. that's kind of reciprocal, which is, I'm loving that part of this industry is that there are the quality professionals out there that want to work together that way. So, what so anyway, I'm doing with, what I'm doing with my uh, landlords is to let them know that, Hey, if your tenant, if you have a tenant in place right now and your tenant is asking you to make a deal with them to keep them out in the property, do whatever you can to do that. Um, if a tenant says, I can't really pay full price, see if you can negotiate half that rent for the next three or four months and make an addendum to your contract to reflect that. <clears throat> yeah. um, try to and try to keep things stable. Exactly. It's better to have some income than no income. Right. Yeah. The all or nothing mentality is so tempting. I mean, I think it's just human nature. You're like, I'm yeah. either getting all of the rent or none of it. And that from the tenant perspective, they think that too. They're like, I'm either paying the full rent or I can't make rent. So I'm paying nothing. And right. so another piece of advice you're giving your landlords is don't be, have a conversation with them and see if you can at least yeah. get partial rent if that's the situation you're in, you're needing to pay. Right. Hey, before we get to thinking about everybody that's going to be watching this um, and to, to mix it up a little bit, because this kind of conversation I, I can have forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody. Uh, so, Rich, do you mind? Um, can I talk about what you went through recently? Uh, yeah. No. Okay. I mean, there, there's no way that I, we couldn't avoid going through uh, uh, being infected with uh, coronavirus. Um, my wife is a chief medical officer um, at uh, St. Barnabas uh, Community Hospital down here, down at the, the shore. Um, and with all of the early activity at the hospital, uh, I was in close contact not only with my wife, obviously, but also the administration there because they needed some help with uh, capacity management, pulling down charts for the hospital, right. make beds available, that type of thing. So yeah, I walked out of that a little sick. Um, and I'm better now. Uh, so, it's so good. <laughs> so what was your experience? Just, you know, real quick, 30 second, what was your experience like? And um, you lived through so, it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm one of the very uh, many lucky people that, that lived through it. Um, but the, the two big ones for me was the lethargic feeling. Uh, I mean, walking from the living room to the kitchen was like walking on Jupiter. You know, it's, you're that heavy walking, yeah. like, I just can't do it. Uh, and um, then the persistent dry cough. Uh, I thought that was a very little deal at the very beginning, but then it started to become a little bit of a bigger deal. Uh, but um, after, after uh, following my wife's suggestion of getting rest, and it just did its work. Uh, cool. Well, but, we're you know, glad you're not okay. Many people, not, there are not many people that are that lucky. You know, they're in the right. hospitals and um, they're, they're and it'll last a long time. It's a long. Yeah. It's amazing the broad spectrum of experiences that people well, have. With that. The good thing that is happening at her hospital, as well as many other hospitals in the area, is that the amount of extubation of um, uh, of ventilators is mm -hmm. increasing. That's good. That That's great news. That's you know, and on another tangent, um, yesterday we had our uh, 111 Fifth Avenue, Manhattan. Morgan and I have an office here in, in New Jersey and another one in Manhattan. So I, I'm a part of that group. And we had an office sales meeting or group meeting. It was more about therapy, I think, than anything. But a lot of people are really struggling with being trapped in the house. And that's... Uh, it, emotionally hard for them i'm not experiencing that personally i don't you I, you've never mentioned it either but i was surprised at how many people are really struggling with um being at home all the time going a little batty yeah yeah so you know i feel bad for him um frankly i'm i seem to be ridiculously content with gaining weight 
<laughs> I got to get that Peloton like you've got. I was talking to Sean about it. that. It's great. I'm quite honestly, uh, yeah, I have one. I mean, many people at Prime have one. People um, are it. It, It's great. It, I love it. But uh, I honestly credit that to uh, how well I went through the coronavirus because that bike kicked your butt. It really, really kicks your butt. And so the you fact that you had that cardio butt. and. Oh, man, I want one so badly. <laughs> and you try it. You should do it. I mean, it's, it's a 30 so day. Money. Um, yeah. You try it's it like out for $3,000 for one Peloton bike. Yeah, but you can, like, if you have a house full of people, then that's one bike. Spreads you out divide out. it by the number of people. So it makes yeah, sense for yeah. your mom and dad, not so much for me. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you could pay for a third of it. I don't. You could get one, and you could come up here and use no, it. Oh, that defeats the whole <laughs> I should go to okay. a gym. I mean, not currently, but I don't. Um. Okay, we should probably. I don't want this to go on too long. No, yeah, we've already hit our. We try to stay under twenty minutes. We're now at twenty-one. <sighs> so, <laughs> but it's fun. Well, I'm glad you're doing okay, Morgan. Yeah. Um, Morgan's relegated to her condo in Hoboken. Um, she doesn't come up here very much because I'm like, have you touched anything? Have you met anybody? Have you, <laughs> are you exposed to anything? Because yeah. um, Sharon and I are pretty isolated here and, you know, we don't have yeah, any okay, exposure. No. Yeah, so far. You know, and frankly, I know I'm likely to get it, but I would really rather not compete for a bed at the hospital. So. I'd, I'd like to be on the back end of that curve and not have to compete. Oh yeah. Maybe you could get that Peloton and I'll recover faster. Cause based on my last four weeks of activity, I'm not going to last very long. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking from kitchen to, to your desk, but, as you can see is like four feet. <laughs> behind you. It's so hard. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, did you, so what do you think? Is credit you would credit for your general positive attitude currently? Who's that? To me? Both of you. Or to your yeah. dad? It seemed both cool. Though, Rich, you kind of worked a lot from your own home before, right? Has this changed your schedule a lot? Uh, no. Um, as real estate agents go, uh, I've been lucky to concentrate on one type of client, which is the landlord, which keeps me at home and then listing properties as they come up. Uh, it hasn't changed it dramatically. Um, no, it really hasn't. Uh, so it, it, it really hasn't affected my day. Right, so then you're still, because it's, part of, it's still basically your slave routine. Dad's are them too. And I just, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because you just said, and I've definitely seen it a lot. A lot of people are so uh, sad and depressed and like worried and worried about their future, worried about their health. They can't go outside. Everything that made them happy is not possible right now. Right. And it really, and I'm personally an extrovert, so I get it. Like <laughs> I'm, I'm so dependent on people. Um, but I have actually been really happy and kind of loving the embra embracing at the very least the quarantine. Oh, we've had some goals that we're working on on a lot of system development too, which helps. And plus I'm getting out some, I've, you know, I've got buyers right now that I'm it, unlike Manhattan, we have a hair more flexibility here and I can go to units that I don't see anybody or have any exposure and they're vacant. So I can put on gloves, put on a mask, get there, call on the phone, you know, call on FaceTime and say, Hey, I'm here, let's take a look. And we walk through on FaceTime and, we put an offer in last week, didn't get that one to close, but I'll be going out again Sunday and I've got showings on Sunday and Tuesday, both that same way. Cool. Um, so I get out a little bit, which is nice. I don't actually get out as much as you do, but I am very social. So I've become more religious about my hour of power. So mm -hmm. calling my clients and calling, uh, even calling my friends, like I make it, a, a rule that I have to do it every day. And I yeah. think that helped me stay positive because before I do it, even though it's like my favorite thing and I feel good after I do it every time, 
before I do it, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> this could be work and I'm going to have to be positive and whatever. And then the just calling people and being like, hi, how's being a human right now? <laughs> it's pretty yeah. crazy, right? Well, I think uh, if we can stick to our routines, you know, to some degree, then that really helps a lot. But if you get out of that, then next thing you know, I think you're stuck on the couch and you're watching TV and then you're watching the news and the world's coming to an end. Because I think a lot of people are preaching to have this routine and then it's one more thing to make you feel bad that you're not having a routine. And I really think you got to have a lot of grace around all right, you're gonna have weird feelings and stuff, but if you're an extrovert and a social person, I highly recommend at some point during your day, make yourself do between five to 10 calls. And when you do that, if the goal is, I just wanna know how this person is doing, your life will change. <laughs> As an extrovert, it is- I'm actually liking that. This is giving me time to make you know, because you have, I'm sure Rich, you feel that way. You've got clients that you do business with, you become friends with, and then you're like, oh, I wonder how they're doing. Heck, I'll call them. I'm not going anywhere right now. And you just get on the phone and check in yeah, with them and see funny. how they're doing. I have, a, I have a handful of clients that the moment I send out a constant contact, I know that there's going to be five that I'm going to hear from just like that. Yeah. I know exactly who I'm going to, yeah. and it's, it's usually a race. And sometimes within like, first few minutes like call from like yeah i knew you're gonna be the first one to call. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah so. that's a great thing about this industry is like you end up you end up making some great friends and oh, yeah. and, and they're across all of these spectrums from <laughs> yeah national leaders to the grocery checkout person you know and they're all great people yeah, yeah i think we we kind of have a gift or from my perspective as a realtor we have a gift because we are we're getting to see this wild historic thing through a lot of different people's eyes and hopefully help them in in the process so yeah hopefully that's i think that's why we all for at least the three of us we all keep trying to work hard to understand what's going on and and strategically think about what's best like rich you know working with our landlords and saying i don't know if this is the time to sell i know that there's some other agents out there pushing that right now but maybe it's more because they're hungry and less because it's a smart idea yeah, the, so. the funny thing is we as agents always try to understand the motivation of your client. What's your client's motivation, whether they're right. buyer or the seller? And in these times, it's important for the property owner to understand what the motivation of the agent is. You know, what's their motivation? Because they're yeah. at, at play in there as well. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, as we were talking earlier today, I have a financial analyst uh, who does all our all of our finances and investments, and he's never ever pushed me to sell or buy. But he just, what's your long term strategy, and yeah. how do I play a part in that? And mm -hmm. what's my best advice for you? And honestly, my best advice comes from multiple webinars, multiple uh, analysts that we're talking to, that they're all saying, you know, it's prices are going down over the next few months. Wait until that mortgage rate goes down. Uh, and, to, and you guys just did that over your last week uh, with the Friday of what, what's going on with the mortgage rate. But uh, when it goes down to a certain level, that's when you're going to see the buyers come out in, in force to make use of that, that lower mortgage rate. So we're looking at fall as uh, our new spring um, uh -huh. where we're expecting new buyers to come out. So yeah. if you can, as a landlord, keep that tenant in place only if you can try to do so. But if you can't and you need to sell, take a look, a very close look at not the sell price of like properties, but what's happening in the pending transaction right now today. Yeah. Uh, that's your price point because that, that tells when a buyer and a seller meet and say, okay, this is what we're going to sell it for. That's the real, that's the real deal. Today, yeah. <laughs> All right, Morgan, you want to close this out? Yes, we're closed. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, guys. All right. Thank hey, Rich, so thanks much. for joining us today. Not a problem. Bye, guys. Right. Bye.